Today we are going to start off with a very interesting chapter that is going to bring out excitement and enthralling experience in all of you. Let me start this today's class with a very basic question to all of you. Do you really think that you and your benchmate who sits in the same bench of your classroom look similar to each other? I hope your answer will be no. Definitely we all individuals, even twins, look very different from one another if looked at intricate level. Now coming to the question of a better design, if I say that what is the difference between you, your friend and a monkey, then definitely you are going to speak out that you and your friend looks much similar than that of the monkey. And if I again get into a new animal tiger, then you will say, yes, me, my friend and the monkey looks quite similar to each other as compared to that of tiger. So the basic conclusion that we can draw from the discussions that I have just done now is many species, organisms present around us look similar morphologically. So we can conclude from these questions that I have asked just now that all the animals, all the organisms present around us can bear similarities as well as dissimilarities to each other on the basis of their own characteristics. So now we are going to start up with a very interesting chapter of biology that comes under your SA2 course that is diversity of living organisms chapter number 7. If I go by breaking up the terminologies of the chapter at the very outset I will point out to the term diversity. You all are acquainted with the word diversity in the way that diversity means variations. Diversity means differences. Diversity means the vivid classes of everything that we see around us. I hope you have all heard once or twice the term biodiversity, which means the diversity of our biological system, plants, animals, fungi, algae, uh, everything that comes nearby to us show diversity in their characteristics. So diversity. The second term that is over here is living organisms which is very clear to us that all the living organisms present around us are very diverse. Now before going to the next half of the chapter I would like to show you certain models and you yourself can distinguish that why I am showing all of you. See this one. This is very clear to all of you. This is an, I will not tell, you will tell later on. Let us classify this as A. Let us classify this as A. The second one if I show you, this is this. A black colored organism with six appendages, that is six legs and two antenna. Okay. Now let us give this B, the name B. If I show you this one, you are quite acquainted with this animal as such. These are all plastic models that I am showing you. You can see it very clearly, this very animal which is very much familiar to us. Girls are always afraid of this animal's hopping. Let us name them as C. Okay. The next class of animal which I think you have not seen as such is this one. We will come across this animal when we go into details of all the kingdoms but just for the sake of now you can see this structure. It sometimes resembles that of the conch that you use during worshipping. Let us name it as D. Then we come across this group of animal which is very familiar to all of you with a tail and a feather, beak, two eyes and whom excreta we are very afraid of falling on us isn't it so we can name it as e last but not the least we cannot forget this living organism which is very important for our survival with green colored leaves this organism can be named as f now if I ask you people that how can you distinguish this six organisms A, B, C, D, E and F from one another, a definite answer that will come from you is F is plant while all this A, B, C, D, E are animals. 
okay agreed so the first basic classification you yourself is doing that this is a plant and rest all of them i shown you are animals now if i say okay f is a plant i exclude that now rest in f how can you classify the rest five that is a b c d e at that time a probable answer from my intelligent students can be that this e1 was a bird yes it can fly it can come across your path when you are moving so yes okay this is a bird you have classified it on the base of what on the basis of its morphological structure the nest the feathers the wing you have classified it this is bird okay now if i say do the rest a b c d a general answer from you will be a is a grasshopper and b is a beetle a is a grasshopper and b is a beetle so you will say sir these two are insects agreed these two are definitely insects and we are left with our very sweet frog and that of a mollusk we are going to learn about it don't worry so you will say this is a frog and this is a conch or if somebody of you knows then this is called unio so what you have done yourself without my assistance is you have classified six group of living organisms based on their morphological structure what is that morphological means outer structure you have understood that if it has wings then it is bird if it has leaves then it is plant if it is having appendages legs then it will be a grasshopper if it is green in color then it will be a grasshopper if it's black then it's a beetle so the basic concept that i want to bring about now is that all around us we can see millions of species roaming hopping jumping climbing screaming and we are able to classify them accordingly am i able to understand okay so now coming to the next part is if i go by the textual portions of your ncrt then there is a discussion upon the size of organisms that we see around us all of you might have heard about the largest flower of the world whose name is rafflesia i am writing it this is the largest flower of the world its smell is also very bad you know pollination you might have heard about this pollination of rafflesia is done by big animal as elephant okay and we have seen very small plants as well like that of the grasses so i can conclude that grasses are the smallest or rather they are semi smaller they less than them also uh, plants are found so in plants also we can see a variety of an uh, ver uh, variety of organisms in animals also we can see such variety we can start from the tiny ants and end into the largest whale that is found to be the king of the oceans okay so was there any attempt for the first time to classify these organisms yes the bewildering evidence to the fact is for the first time aristotle you all have heard about aristotle the for the first time aristotle who is said to be the father of zoology that is animal biology first classified the very big organisms into two groups plants and animals now how did he classify he classified on the basis of their habitat if they are living in land he mostly classified them as plants then he made air and water as other two sections of habitat for the organisms to stay but it was wrong though it was the first attempt but it was found to be wrong why because it is very misleading many animals who are found to be in water were excluded many plants who are found to be in water were excluded only birds were considered as animals because they are used to fly in the air as well as those as compared to that of the land animals were considered as such so after aristotle there was a huge need for a basic and a good system of classification let us go into that